of the big bed. Amen. A church you can call home where we honor God, love family, serve others, pursue excellence. And we have a passion for God and a passion for souls. Amen. Amen. Yeah. So praise God. We want to welcome all our NBC family, all of you that are visiting us by audio or video. So we want to just let you know, prepare yourselves to receive. Amen. Praise God. Before I get too far ahead, um, let's uh, make this declaration together. Amen. Yeah. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Grab your sword. You got a sword? Amen. Come on, soldier of God. Let's say it together. Yeah. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. Today, I'll be taught the word of God. I boldly confess. My mind is alert. My spirit is receptive. And I'll never be the same in Jesus' name. I guarantee you, your mind is alert. And it's going all the time. You just got to make sure it's going for him. And not for the world. Amen. Because the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. So you got to be careful. Amen. So I just wanted to greet you. And I wanted to share with you. And I won't be bringing a message. Um, brother, brother Ryan. Yeah, that's the good news. <laughs> Not me. Brother Ryan, he's going to come up here. And he's going to bring the message for you. Amen. And uh, I just want to say, pray for him. And be ready to receive what God has for you. You know, it's not about me. It's about the word. Amen. And whatever word God has or whoever he uses to bring it to, you will be ready to receive what God has amen. for you, amen? Because God got something for you. Yeah. You just be ready to receive and do what the Word of God says to do, amen? So, Brother Ryan, come on up and uh, yeah. just uh, pray for him. And, uh, amen. Give me this. Changing other guards. Changing other guards, amen. Let's see how to do this. Uh, Somewhere it's supposed to be. That's what Yeah, it had to be. Let me see. Something else. You want to sit on that? Yeah, you could. Yeah, you're on. <laughs> Greetings in the name of the Lord. Amen. Yeah. As we all know, this is Pastor Appreciation Month, and I want you to know I truly appreciate our pastors. Yeah. So, as having been a pastor before, it's kind of daunting knowing that you have to hold people's souls in your hands, so to speak, as they're listening to you and they're trusting you and believing you that you're going to teach them and tell them the truth. And if you're not, then God's going to hold you accountable. Yeah. So, let's start with a, a poem that I, I found by Patricia Bankhead. It says, Lord, help my pastor, I pray. There are many obstacles in his way. Every burden, help him to bear. Dear Lord, help him in your tender care. Give him strength and the ability to care for the church and his family. Lord, there is so much he has to do. He can't do alone. He surely needs you. So shelter him in your loving arms, safe from all danger and unseen harm. Guard his mouth, his heart and mind. Remove every, every tittle of sin and pride. Keep him in the hour of temptation. May he not be moved by Satan's persuasion. Remove all fears, Lord. Remove all doubt. By your spirit, Lord, be in his mouth, so that he will speak a word that is due and bring your dear people closer to you. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 So, Pastor, I want you to know I appreciate you. And Pastor Pat, I appreciate you and all the Bible study stuff. We had a pastor one time that the, the whole town was up against him because he was trying to tell everybody that if you seem to go into hell, and nobody wanted to hear it. No. He says, they're not going to run me out of town. If I leave here, it'd be like I'm leading a parade. Everybody's following behind me. But he said, if you think it's easy being a pastor, everybody should be a pastor for six months and just see how, how easy it really is. Because you don't understand, and I, I forget sometimes, how much time and effort is spent into preparing a simple message. 
time you spend on your knees or in your, on your face before God trying to find the exact scriptures that he has for you and open up your heart for the spirit to flow through him through her you know, whether it's a pastor a preacher a teacher a bishop wh whoever is your spiritual leader if they are not telling you and teaching you the word of God complete und undivided whole then you need to pray for them mm -hmm. if they're leaving parts of the scriptures out if they're only teaching you parts of it they're not doing you any favors mm -hmm. you need to pray for them I'm not saying leave the church I'm saying pray for the pastor your minister your bishop whoever is your spiritual leader pray for them that they teach you the true word of God yeah. Ephesians chapter 4 you turn there you're going to start with verse 1 Ephesians is an awesome book well, there's, they're all awesome but I, I truly love reading Ephesians yeah. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 1 I therefore the prisoner of the Lord Beseech you that you walk worthy of the location wherein you are called. Now, there are some, some uh, pastors who are called and some who just went. <laughs> there are some pastors who maybe their mom or dad or, you know, a family tradition, a family mm -hmm. thing, you know, they just follow in their father's footsteps. Or there was a need, so I'll step up and I'll do it. But unless they're truly called of God, mm -hmm. They're not doing the most they could possibly do. Yes. With all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace, mm -hmm. there is one body and one Spirit, even as ye have called in one hope of your calling, mm -hmm. one Lord, one faith, one baptism. One God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. Mm -hmm. For unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Wherefore we, he saith, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and gave men gifts to men. Now that he ascended, but what is it that he also descended first to the lower parts of the earth? He that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens. They might fill all things. I, I want to read this last verse here, but I don't like just reading one verse. I want to keep it all in context. He gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers. And I think we've all been called to be a teacher. Maybe not in a city school room, maybe not in a classroom at school. But it's your home, at your work, wherever you are, you can be teaching other people about Jesus. Yes. You can be teaching them about the scripture by your words, by your actions, by your your love for them and, and your ministering to them may not be a a sermon. It might be reaching out to them when they're in pain or they're <coughs> lost in misery because of family problems or job problems. God has called us to minister to them any way we can. Mm -hmm. And our pastors do an awesome job of this. Before the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. And pastors do this all the time. They edify the body of Christ. They help us understand the word of God. They open up the word of truth to us. When you think about a pastor, what do you think of? You think of someone who gets up here for 30, 45 minutes and talks, and sometimes you understand what he's saying, and sometimes you don't. Sometimes you're going, I have no clue what he just said. But when you take time to write the scriptures down and go home and read them for yourselves, 
I always encourage people to do this. Read the scriptures for yourself. Yeah. Don't depend upon one person or two people telling you what the Bible says. You have to know for yourself for sure what it says. Mm -hmm. Go home. Reread what they read to you. Mm -hmm. If there's a difference in your opinion of what they're saying, don't get in front of the church and you didn't tell, you know, yeah. <laughs> take them, you know, go to by themselves and say, I don't understand. You know, you're telling me this and I'm reading this and mm -hmm. help me understand this. Mm -hmm. Pray about it. Yes. One thing Satan would love to do mm -hmm. is divide the church. Have oh, yeah. division where there's controversy, there's all kinds of problems. And I've seen great churches get tore up because Someone didn't like to color the carpet. Oh my God. You know, just simple things. Uh -huh. that, you know, they didn't ask my opinion. They think that they're also all this. Uh -huh. But our pastors have a great responsibility to spend time before God to bring the truth, <clears throat> to bring the scripture to us. And until you spend time in God's word and truly understand all the work that they do, not just up here, but they're going through the to the through the community. They're visiting people. They're going through different ministries. They're they're working. I have not met a pastor yet who wasn't a jack of all trades. They had to do the plumbing. They had to do the carpentry work. They had to clean the church. Pastor, yes. Ministry of helps. Pastor could use some help here. If you have a few minutes during the week, ask him, what do you need? All right. You know, and I've asked him, and so far he hasn't called me very often. I think he forgets to call, or I don't do a very good job, one or the other. I'm not sure which of them. Maybe I make a wish for him. When I hire someone, or when I want to do a carpentry work or mechanic work, it costs me twice as much because what I do, I got to hire somebody else to come behind me and fix it right at that time. That may be what happened with the pastor. I, I come in here and help him, and he goes, "Okay, I'll, I'll do it by myself now." <laughs> but no, Sister Pat, Brother Brother Jose, they could use some help. And I'm here, Pastor. If you need me, call me. Of course, I may not be here. So, <laughs> <laughs> so what I want to say today is not going to take a great deal, deal of time. But we have to know that our pastors fight. A spiritual battle that we cannot even comprehend. If Satan is attacking us on a daily level, not being pastors, imagine what he's doing to attack our pastors. He wants them to just water down the word. He wants them to just use, you know, portions of the scripture, leave parts of it out. You know, he wants us, he wants the pastors to just make you feel good. If your pastor is not telling you that hell is bad and heaven is good, sin is going to take you to hell, and salvation will take you to heaven, then he's not doing you any justice. Hmm. Pastors have to tell you that if you sin, you're going to hell. Irregardless. I'm not going to stand up here and tell you what sin is. The Bible tells, the, tells us what sin is. It's not all inclusive in the Bible because well, it didn't say this in the Bible. The Bible says that our body is a temple of the Holy Ghost. We're supposed to take care of it. He who knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. If there's something in your life that you think may or may not be right, pray about it. Don't depend on me or someone else to tell you that's sin or that's not sin. Because things, what God delivered me from, if I went back to him, that would be sin. God delivered me from drugs and alcohol and all the things that went on that lifestyle. And if I went back to any of it, it would be sin. Mm -hmm. Now, just because somebody else is doing doing something I'm, I was doing, maybe God hasn't convicted of them of sin yet. The thing is that God loves each and every one of us. Yeah. And He has instructed our pastors to lead us. There are shepherds. Have you ever been around sheep? I've been around yeah. cattle, but never sheep. But cattle, you know, you, you put them out there in the pasture, they wander around and they eat and stuff. The sheep, my uncle had some sheep, you know, and he always had to be out there kind of walking around. And, 
you know, and he, he they knew his voice. Mm -hmm. He'd go to call his sheep and they'd come to him. I'd get out there and try it and it's, I don't know who you are, we just wander <laughs> off someplace. But you know, Jesus know. is the good shepherd. Uh -huh. You know, we should know his voice. Yes. And pastor is up here every Sunday saying, if you don't know Jesus, today is the day you need to get right with God. You know, it's very, very simple. Say, Father, forgive me for I've sinned. You know, and believe on the word of Jesus Christ. Galatians 6, chapter, chapter 6, verse 9. Galatians 6, 9. And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. So many pastors have worked and worked and worked and never hear the word thank you. No one ever tells them I appreciate you. You know, they, they struggle and struggle and struggle. Pastors need us to lift them up. You know, we hold them up in prayer. Don't go to Sunday, hear the, hear the message, and go home and have pastor for, you know, pastor for lunch, you know. You know, talk about him and talk about him and talk about him, you know. Did you hear what he said? I can't believe he said that. You know, they, they tear pastors apart like they do a chicken. They just tear it apart and grab pieces, you know. And we had a pastor one time said, I didn't know he had anything but a, but a neck. It's all I ever had when I went to somebody's house for, for dinner or for church. All I had is nets. Everybody else grabbed the good pieces. Oh, I just God. got the neck. <laughs> I got a wing or something, you know. Pastors give us the meat. And yet all we want to give him is a, a foot. You know, a neck, a beak or something. No, no meat on it. We don't want to take any time to help appreciate them. I don't want like a good piece of meat when I sit down. I want to... Who heard that commercial? Where's the beef? <laughs> you know, so pastor, sometimes you and every other pastor will tell us the same thing over and over and over and over. You know, maybe different scriptures, but it's the same message. You're going, is he ever going to get off this topic? <laughs> you know, I've heard this topic every Sunday I come <laughs> here. But then God told me one time in you know, when you start listening to what he's saying mm -hmm. and start doing what he's saying, then we'll right. move on to something else. Yes. Yeah. Amen. So, Pastor, if I need it, <laughs> give it on, give it to me. We had a, I had to sit in the back seat every time. And our pastor said, you know, when I give you something, you don't think it's for you, you don't like it, just pass it on to the people behind you. <laughs> so I sit in the very back pew, and I was getting a whole bunch of it. <laughs> Nobody wanted to hear what the pastor was saying. Because it made them feel uncomfortable. It made them change. That's what the Word of God is supposed to do. Bring change to your life. It's supposed to make you better. When you leave here, you shouldn't, you shouldn't have all the warm fuzzies and stuff. You know, pastor made me feel so good. Like I, my life is perfect. There's nothing in my life that is, is wrong. He's encouraged me to be the best I can be. Well, the best I can be is on my knees before God. Mm -hmm. A man never stands so high, so tall, as when he's on his knees. Mm -hmm. You know, the arms lifted up. Yes. Amen. The pastor always encourages us to do that. The Amplified Version says, Let us not grow weary or become discouraged in doing good. For at the proper time, we will reap if we do not give in. Amen. Zechariah chapter 4, verse 6. Then he answered and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord, saying, Zerubbabel, saying, Not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. Amen. When the pastors are flowing in the spirit, the word just comes through them. They don't have to struggle for the word. They don't have to try and make you understand what they're saying. It'll come through. And what is said will affect everyone a little bit different because we all need something a little bit different. Yes. Our needs are not the same. We are not cookie cutter Christians. That's it. We're different. Yeah. 
My needs, my fears, my problems, my situation is so much different than everybody else's. Mm -hmm. Yours is so much different than mine and anybody else's because we are unique. God created us an individual. <clears throat> and salvation is an individual experience. Mm -hmm. Just because my grandparents or my parents were Christians does not automatically make me a Christian. Yes, yes. Pastor has said, you can stand in a, in a garage, doesn't make you a Cadillac or a Porsche or a Mercedes or anything else. You're just standing in the garage going, here I am. <laughs> you know? So, when we come to church, coming to church does not make us a Christian. Come on now. You can go through every single church door. You can be a member of every single denomination mm -hmm. and still split hell wide open. Mm -hmm. So when pastors are up here, he's not pointing fingers at anybody because I guarantee if he was, <laughs> he's, got, he's got three coming back this way. I mean, he's got this, you know. <laughs> pastors, unless God revealed it to you or the Mrs. Kravitz across the street remember her off <laughs> which, you know or someone tells you pastor don't know what's going on in your life because every one of us has something hidden in our hearts something that's secret that we don't want anyone to know but God knows right. and if you're sitting there and pastor starts talking about your business <laughs> it's because God's telling him to I don't like you talking about me. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I, I used to, we had to start wearing steel-toed shoes, I guess, coming to work. He's always stepping on my toes. But I thank you for that, Pastor. In the Easy Read version, this is the message of, from the Lord of Zerubbabel. Your help will not come from your own strength and power. No, your help will come from my spirit. Yeah. This is what the Lord, all-powerful, says. Don't lead or minister from your own strength. Trust God to lead you. Mm -hmm. So, Pastor, I encourage you even more so today than ever before to spend time, quality, alone time. This is not just for our pastor, but all pastors. Spend quality, quiet time with God. Asking Him to strengthen you, encouraging you, to show you what you need to for your, for your churches, for your congregation, for your people. Mm -hmm. Isaiah 55, 8 through 11. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain cometh down, and the snow from heaven, and returneth not thither, yeah. but watereth the earth, and maketh it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower, and bread to the eater. Yes. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth, it shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing wherein I, I sent it. My first pastor, after me being saved, before, when I was in jail, they'd come to the jail, they'd, they'd talk to us, and of course we were tough and turned our backs on him, smoking cigarettes, you know, and just whatever. And, but the word kept getting through. His word did not just go and bounce off the wall and go somewhere else. It was getting in. Praise God. Make a long story short, that pastor turned out to be a crook. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah who are thought of pastors being crooks. You know, you never hear about preachers, you know, taking money or doing bad things or getting arrested. You don't hear about those things. They're not human. They're, they're above being human. Mm. You know, and without going into details, he left, him and his family left in the middle of the night and, and took off. <laughs> so, I was going, just what I was receiving from him is that was it all a lie? Was it real? But God said that His word would not be void. You know, it, it, it accomplished that which it intended yeah. to be. Yeah. 
His word is true. No matter who brings it, His word is true. So no matter who you hear, from, you, might, you might hear something from a, from a sinner. I know some, some people who are not Christians, who do not claim to be Christians, who are raised in church, who know the Bible, who know the Scripture. That's why they're watching you and going, that's not right. Mm. Christians wouldn't do that. Because mm. they know the Scripture. They, they've read it when they were in Sunday school or something. Mm. So, as you are living your life, be open for ways to encourage other people. But when someone tells you that's not right, pray about it. Maybe they're right. Maybe they're wrong. But pray about it. Joshua chapter 1, verse 1. Now after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, mm -hmm. Moses' minister, saying, mm -hmm. Moses, my servant is dead. Now therefore arise, go over this Jordan, thou and all this people unto the land which I do give to them, mm -hmm. even to the children of Israel. Every place of the sole of your foot shall tread upon that I have given unto you, as I said unto Moses, for the wilderness, for the Lebanon, even to the greater river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, to the great sea toward the going down of the sun shall be your coast. Now, Pastor, you, this is your area right here. But everywhere you go, you're a minister. You don't just take off your ministers. Okay, today I'm going to go be a regular person and not be a minister. God is called you to go wherever you go mm -hmm. and wherever you put your foot down you're still a minister mm -hmm. therefore shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of, of thy life mm -hmm. as I was with Moses so I will be with thee I will not fail thee nor forsake thee God is not a respecter of persons as he was with Moses he will be with you mm -hmm. and you and everyone else be strong of a good courage for unto this people shalt thou divide for an inheritance of land which I swear unto their fathers to give them. Mm -hmm. Now all pastors should hear this. Only be thou strong and very courageous. Because yeah. Satan okay. at the roaring light is going about seeing who, who, can, who he can devour. Mm -hmm. and he loves chewing pastors up and spitting them out. Mm -hmm. He loves making them feel like they're not accomplishing anything. Just give up. No one's listening anyway. The churches are empty. The pews are empty. There's no one cares about me. Poor pitiful me. I think I'll go eat worms. You know, nobody loves me. Nobody hates me. But you know, I don't care. Pastor has said this over and over and over again. If there's no one in the congregation, he's still going to get up here and preach the gospel. He's still going to minister. So. Be strong, be courageous, mm -hmm. that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left, mm -hmm. that thou mayest prosper in whatsoever thou goest. So I would encourage pastors all over the world to not water down the scripture. Mm -hmm. Leave the blood in it. Yes. <clears throat> Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission for sin. And so many people are, are disgusted by the thought of, of the blood. They want to take it out of the scriptures. They want to take it out of the songs. Mm. They want to have it just, I come here, I do my 30 minutes, my 45 minutes. You know, I say it with the church. I belong to this church. I got my name on the roster. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter. Is your name written in the Lamb's Book of Life? That's what's going to count. We stand before God, and He looks at you and goes, Who are you? I mean, this is not what He's going to say. I'm just paraphrasing this. Who are you? You're, I don't see your name anywhere here. Well, yeah, I used to go to this church or that church, and you know, and I used to do all kinds of good work for the pastor. I used to do things for him. I, I swept the floor. I used to do the plumbing. I used to mow the grass. You know, I even went and visited the sick people in the, in the hospital and stuff. I did all kinds of great things. Well, your name's not written in the Lamb's Book of Life. 
And you hear that and you hear, depart from me, you workers of iniquity, I know you not. Mm. You're going to remember the words the pastors say, you know, today is the day of salvation. Mm -hmm. Not yesterday, not tomorrow. Yeah. Right, now. right now. We are not guaranteed another second. Mm. As you can tell, I'm on duty. And just my radio will go off any time for some, you know, I, I don't feel good. I stub my toe to somebody, you know, dying. It could be anything. I think the radio. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and pastors have the same thing, you know. They could be home watching the Cowboys or, you know, or, or something. You know, when somebody calls, somebody calls us, you know, my mom's dying, you know. Can you come pray with her? Can you wait till halftime? <laughs> the game's almost over. Can you give me just a few minutes? <laughs> I guarantee you that the big name preachers, you know, the big mega church, if you call them, they're not coming. Come over here. Praise the Lord. I, I, I forget who it was. I, I wrote a, a pastor one time uh, down in Houston or someplace, you know, and I got a, a return letter from somebody, 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 somebody's secretary way down the line, you know, and uh, we don't do that. No. Okay, well then, where do I go? <laughs> you go to your local church. You go to your local pastor. And I'm going to, this is not what I had planned, but, you know, our pastor does not get a, a salary. How many of you would do every day the things that he does, tends to clean, studies, prepares, and not get a salary, not doing you know, just doing it because of the will of God. Most people wouldn't do it. Would you go to your job if you didn't get paid for it? Well, I used to volunteer, but I mean, that's a different story. I had a job, I, you know, I had, I had money coming in. But he didn't get paid for this. You know, if each and every one of us would pay our tithe, I probably, I'm still going on a lot of toes maybe, <laughs> but if we pay our tithe, he could get a salary. Maybe not a $100,000 a year salary, maybe $25 a week or something, you know, but he'd get something. <laughs> But God has instructed us to pay our tithe. Mm -hmm. So that's all I'm going to say about that. <laughs> well, maybe not. Anyway, I may come back to it later. <laughs> so the pastors, they do it because they're called to, not because of, of well, let me back this up. When I was in high school, if somebody asked me what I wanted to do, he goes, you can be a preacher, you can make lots of money. <laughs> You know, cause all you see are these TV preachers, you know, you know, making, they have these big fancy houses, drive nice cars, have jets, and mm -hmm. last time I was in pastor's jet, he went, <laughs> I think he has a low grade fuel in it or something, <laughs> I don't know, but our pastors don't live beyond their means, they're, they're regular people just like us, and I think we should treat our pastors better than we do our neighbors, better than we do our, our bosses because they're concerned about our spiritual life. Our bosses, our neighbors are only concerned about them and things right about them. So, Pastor, I encourage you to keep stomping on my toes, okay? <laughs> okay, in closing, yay. <clears throat> this is a poem by Judy Crow titled Our Pastor. So this pastor appreciation poem reminds us of the importance of pastors in our lives and how we should respond. Have you ever walked in our pastor's shoes and gone where his feet have trod? Have you ever thought of what he means to us and on your knees given thanks to God? Have you ever told him thank you for being there when times are tough, for comforting words, and fervent prayers. When trials come, the storms of life are rough. He answers our calls in the middle of the night and tells us not to worry, for he will be there. He gives up his comfort of quiet rest 
and comes with prayers of comfort to share. Have you ever thought to say, thank you, Pastor, for preaching God's Word to help us understand? For all the times He has asked for things that will lend us a, lend us a helping hand, when you pray, put Him at the top of the list and ask the Lord to surround Him with loving care, to give Him strength and walk with Him, to help Him with the burdens that He must bear. Have you ever walked in our pastor's shoes? And gone where his feet have tried? Have you ever thought of what he means to us on your knees, giving thanks to God? So, Pastor, we appreciate you, love you. I encourage you to keep on the good fight of faith, Amen. to keep doing the things you do, and you have my permission to slap me for a little bit. If I need a little bit of encouragement, you, can, I, you, give, you have my permission. So, Pray for that big Bible you got. Pray for that big Bible. So, right now we're going to close in a word of prayer. I want everyone to, to bow your heads, close your eyes, and if you feel comfortable, lift your arms and just say, Father, we love you. Yes. We thank you for this beautiful day that you've given yes. to us. And Lord, as we come to the close of the sermon, we know that your word will accomplish that which it was intended. I pray for all pastors, all ministers, all bishops and, and fathers and every, whatever your spiritual leader is called to be encouraged yes. to stand before you every day and ask, Lord, what can I do for you? Yes. Now, how can I get praise how can i get better rewards but lord what can i do for you so father today i ask that if there's anyone today who does not know you as lord and savior yes. or the most important decision they will ever make yes. more important than what clothes to put on more important mm -hmm. than what job to have or what yes. car to buy or what food to eat the most important decision you'll ever make is to accept Jesus Christ is your Savior. Yes. Thank you, Lord. So that anyone who does not know you, I ask, Father, that you right now speak to them. Mm. And all we have to do is say, Father, I know I'm a sinner. I acknowledge and I, I know that Jesus died on the cross for my sins. I accept that sacrifice and I accept Jesus Christ as my Savior. Yes. Thank you. Father, I pray that if someone accepts you as Lord and Savior, they will be given the courage, the boldness to tell other people because, Lord, we have to speak it out. We have to let other people know about you that we acknowledge the fact that we are accepted in the house of God because we are a Christian now. The Father in Jesus' precious name, we ask this, that you touch our pastors, encourage them, strengthen them, prosper them, even as their soul prospers, in Jesus' precious name. Amen.